Well guys, a series of unfortunate events happened. Uh, I got finally to the track, did some testing and stuff. Kinda didn't really go how I planned, but I'll, I'll go over it with you guys. Uh, so, here we go. Well guys, the, uh, as you can tell, the engine is missing. It's gone. So, it's not gone, it's sitting over there, but. Yeah, we took it to the, well, where I left you guys off at, I was needing a shifter. And, uh, I ended up just canceling my original order, and I got this one, which is the exact same shifter. But I got it through Proline Race Engines. They happened to carry them in stock. So they got it to me in, like, two days. So that was pretty sweet. Uh, it's a super nice shifter. I really like it a lot. It's pretty badass. Anyways, so we got the shifter installed, and uh, I got a dog. Back. So we got the shifter installed, started to do some testing and everything, and uh, my original, it was going good. Uh, the power glide that Jake built is working phenomenally. Doesn't leak, it ships super fast, super crisp. Uh, if you watch his video, you'll know what parts are inside of this thing. It's pretty much aftermarket, almost everything. But yeah, it shifts instant and very crisp. And uh, finally, one thing was I was able to use the bump box on my 400. For whatever reason, the bump box wouldn't work unless it was like on the very highest settings. And it's so this one, I, I, uh, I went to go take it out. We're on the 400 settings on the bump box, and it lunged like five feet. I thought I broke the trans. It was like, <laughs> but uh, so I had to finally turn it down. So actually, the bump box is working great. So yeah, the trans power glide, great. But when I first went and tested this outside or took it down the road, I was getting a horrible vibration. It was really bad. So it turns out my uh, 400 drive shaft was a little bit too short even with the long snout on there. Um, so it just didn't work out. I ended up having to get a new drive shaft. Uh, I went with a fancy carbon fiber drive shaft, probably way overkill, but I figured I'm never gonna put a different transmission than what's in it right here. So I figured I'd just spend the money and get a good one. And carbon fiber, if it ever breaks, it'll just splinter. It won't like beat the underneath of the car to death. And uh, it, Carbon fiber, because it's a composite, it kind of twists. So it uh, helps not knock the tires off, one. And two, it kind of eliminates any vibrations in the driveline. So that's what we went with with that. Okay, flash forward to, we go to the track. So, which I'll insert some clips, which ones I have. Sorry, I didn't film very much. I know you guys want to see the action stuff, but we were just... knees deep and everything trying to get everything working and testing and the track was pushing us for time and everything else but for the slips I mean, there was a couple more than this but so we take it out and uh on like 10 pounds of boost, it went a six, granted, okay, so granted guys, you know, we were expecting to go, like I was saying this combo should go 550s was the goal, which, you know, it still was, but I didn't hit the goal, so I mean, it's all right, but a little disappointing, but it's okay. But uh, yeah, it went 630, uh, 139, 60 foot, 109 mile an hour, you know, which was an okay, okay starting point. I was okay with that on 10 pounds, but then we upped the boost to, I want to say 15 pounds and then it went 6.1 at 113. So the mile an hour is a little better. 
but we were getting, if we were looking at the data logs and we were getting fluctuation with boost really bad in first gear. Like uh, if you look at the boost ramp, it would do this. It was like a hill until you hit high gear. So we found out that, so we were done for the night when we see that because we didn't have any uh, push lock hose. So, because I had routed the boost controller incorrectly, I guess. So we changed, we took it home, changed all that and went back out Saturday. And we're like, all right, there's no way that, you know, we shouldn't have any boost fluctuation. And uh, so we, so I put a, you know, I was like, all right, we're gonna, we're either gonna run a 550 or we're gonna blow this thing up. You know, I was at the point where I didn't really care. It's the end of the year. So if the engine blows up, it freaking blows up. So I put a pretty spicy tune up in it, more boost than this uh, I've ever put to it. And uh, it ended up going like, granted, I was like, all right, this has got to go a 570 minimum. And uh, it went six, six zero oh, at one fourteen. So it did pick up, but that was on like twenty two pounds of boost. Granted, if you guys remember, it went five eighty at one twenty one on a uh, a lot less boost, but the combo was way different. It had that S four seventy five, not this S four eighty four, which you would think that this would be a more efficient turbo at less boost. Had an air to water intercooler, which that reminds me that this big thousand horsepower Garrett air to air, it's definitely better than the water meth that I had on here. The water meth just freaking sucked. But this is working, but it was still seeing like 130 degree intake temps at the top of the pole. So I'm somewhat disappointed in that. I don't know why it's not working as good as I thought it would. Um, so we ended up just bringing it back and I'm um, like, all right guys, let's just, there was no point to pump 30 pounds of boost into it just to run a 5.9. I mean, why why blow it up just to gain a 10th? You know, it makes no sense. So um, I don't know why we can't replicate that high five pass. Um, a lot has changed on the combo since then. So maybe we, maybe I did something, you know, I took steps backwards I guess, apparently. Um, so I'm just like, all right, we're gonna be done with this kind of stock block life. Um, I'm gonna build a new motor for this. I feel like the chassis and the car is capable of going pretty fast. It feels really good as far as, it, it never spins. Granted, those 60 foots aren't crazy good, but uh, I think that's just due to a lack of power. But it never spins. The power glide feels perfect. Um, so that's all great. But the, uh, so yeah, I yanked the motor. I'm gonna sell this engine. There's nothing wrong with it. I mean, no, not dogging this little motor. It's a great little engine for what it is. I mean, running right out of 6.0, 590 passes, you know, with not insane amounts of boost. You know, I never split the block or whatever. Like people will just split the block at, Seven eight hundred horsepower, which it never did. It still has awesome oil pressure. But you guys got to think this is still just a stock flanged output hole. You know these are these are small ports. This has an F cam in it. You know one hundred and fifty dollar camshaft. It has you know it's only three hundred fifty eight cubic inch. That's not very big. So it's good for what it is, but it's not. It's not going to get me to where I want to go with this car. So we're going to, I'm selling this and the plan is to build a, uh, a Dart 427. So that's what I've always wanted. This motor was just kind of, I didn't want to build this motor. This isn't really my build. It was just a kind of a happenstance engine that I got a really good deal on it from Jake. Couldn't pass it up. I was kind of hard up for a motor at the time because I had blown my 393 up. So yeah, we just kind of threw a bunch of hodgepodge parts on it and went racing with it and it did pretty good. So, but yeah, now I want to build a dart block 427, you know, big high ports on it, uh, 88 millimeter turbo. I'm going back to an air to water intercooler, you know, just full race car stuff, stuff that I know will make, I mean, the goal, this, 
the motor I'm gonna build will make 1500 horsepower, you know, with basic, not a lot pushing on it. That was the whole thing. I'd like to go, the motor combo I'm building will go mid fours, no problem. I've seen this combo replicated multiple times and uh, it just flies, you know, 427 cubes. That's a lot of cubes out of a small block. You'll have tons of mid range and low end torque. You know, a set of 240cc high ports on there, they're gonna flow all the air behind an 88 millimeter turbo. I'll never have to worry about the block cracking or breaking, being a dart block. And uh, yeah, it's, the car's gonna fly then. So it's gonna be a long road, guys. Uh, hopefully you stick around. I'll As soon as I sell this, I can start buying uh, parts for the dart. Uh, yeah, it should be. Hell, we, I was talking to Jake, we might just skip the fives all together, you know, screw the fives. We'll just go straight to running high fours. So, yeah, that's the plan, guys. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll insert some clips where I can, if I haven't already, of the runs. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, see you later.